need to try that again, but maybe we should build a bigger rocket. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's time for a bigger rocket. Something more decisive. But then, general rocketry is coming up. Maybe we'll just do a minor adjustment to that rocket and wait on the bigger rocket until we've got general rocketry so that we can get the better engines. We, uh, we don't have radial decouplers yet. I thought we had unlocked those. I wanted to slap some boosters on. Um, I guess they're under stability. Well, let's cue that. Yep, yeah, we don't have radial decouplers yet. This is just begging for some boosters. Would it help if I just slapped them on without any decouplers? Oops. <laughs> well, the thrust weight ratio is really special. Oh, so the build time was probably really high. Let's see. Yeah, it goes to 75 days compared to 42 days just by adding those. If we have two engines, that's 56 days. I think 56 days is reasonable. We still only have aluminum gridded tanks. The goal probably should be to make sure that the ether stage manages to do the entire burn for the moon. We'll make this a little bit smaller for corrections. Well, I'll call this Serenity 3. Because now we have two engines at the bottom. 20 ton rocket now, 21 tons. Mind you, our pad limit is 40, so we'll have to watch out for that eventually. Okay, well general rocketry will actually finish first. Let's get the Serenity 3 up. I really want to get that lunar mission done. Soon we'll have mission control and the ability to make maneuver nodes. And then it's all gravy after that. <laughs> it's all gravy after that. Okay, as before, target the moon, line up, and go. This time with more delta V, hopefully, and more thrust weight ratio at the start, start, which will help out too. Throttle up, ignition, and go. Lots of thrust weight ratio. All right. We got a lot more Q this time, and we're probably through it. Well, through the max Q part. Much G-forces here, though. Separation and ignition. And fairings. Alright. I don't think I wanted phase angle to target. I wanted heading to target there. Okay, we'll only use a little bit of the next stage in order to complete orbit, and we should have enough for the entire transfer using the other stage now. Okay, staging. Okay, good enough. 295 by 183. We'll need to be over here in order to make the transfer. Once again, Australia. Once again, Australia. At this time, the burn time should not be too long. Four minutes, though. It's, it's fairly long, actually. Okay, prograde. RCS on. With this newly revamped two reaver uh, rocket, the Serenity 3, we could probably put this into orbit around the moon. Eyeball the moon position. Okay, let's go. Okay, we're done with that stage. Separation. And continuing to try to impact. And we're making an impact. 
can be more decisive about it. All right, we're in good shape. Let us continue. There's no new science to do around here, right? We've done all this, yeah. Still just carrying the basic instruments. Heading out from Earth. We should probably point at the sun. Let's just keep that keep keep that rotation. Oh, what did I say? See, uh, people wonder why we have to spin stabilize. Well, it's because in time warp it doesn't like to stay the way it is, and we don't have SAS with this. So, SAS might be able to keep it stable during time warp even. Communitron sixteen communication failure. Um, fortunately, I think Oscrap doesn't understand the real antenna communication, so we're all right. Repair. Beyond repair. <laughs> well, okay, I guess I got the gist of what that message was supposed to be, uh, even though I didn't get the right message from that. That would be an O-scrap thing. That's not something I get to fix, thankfully. Okay, we've got a negative periapsis, as intended. And hopefully we're crashing in line of sight with Earth. I guess we should get some science. Let's see. Science. Okay, well, no. Yes, we can do that. We should just use this particular... Rocket again with the two reavers to do the geostationary orbit satellite. Okay, so we filled flyby, right? Yeah. We just need impactor. See if there's anything new. Yeah, there's another space high over the lowlands this time. Well, this is a lot closer. Is that? It's still space high, but it's over Mare, well, the Sea of Serenity. Okay, now we're near the moon. Temperature scan works. Gravity scan. And let's wait a little bit. Not too long, though. And pressure scan. Okay, impact. Let's make sure it actually happens. We've got lots of delta V left here. Okay. All right. We got that. All right. So, good. <laughs> good. Last thing, we'll try that geostationary orbit contract again, and we'll use the Serenity 3. Okay, I'll boost that up, and we'll take that one off. That will surely, surely have enough delta V. I'm even going to put MLI layer. I think the problem was we didn't have the MLI layers on this stage, and we lost too much delta V like that. So, we gotta put 10 MLI layers there. Okay. So, geostationary orbit again. Okay, you know what? We really need to spend on science upgrades. I've got some cash now. Our science is just going too slow. Point 0.1 science per day. Good. I don't think our rocket construction is that slow. I think we'll probably want more for the science. Let's start with advanced rocketry. Uh, let's hold off on the other stuff until I know what I need, though. Okay, rolling out. Stay light. Let's go. 22 tons on the pad. Throttle up. There still isn't SAS. Ignition. Launch. Okay, looking good. I do like the more powerful version of this. 
Oh, I wanted the... I don't need relative inclination down there. Okay, staging. Whoa, wiggle. And pharynx. Just a little CubeSat uh, at the end of the day. Maybe I should reduce the gain on the CubeSat communications, because they probably shouldn't... Well, then again, we did send CubeSats to, like, Mars, so... Um, I take it back. Okay, I was thinking maybe they wouldn't be used for... Or they wouldn't be able to communicate from geostationary orbit, but actually, they act, they, they can sometimes. So, <laughs> let's, let's not nerf them. We won't nerf them. Okay, staging. A little ether. Which always seems to have less delta V than it was supposed to. Okay. We are in orbit, though it's a little bit lopsided, but that's fine. We're going to make it more lopsided in a sec. Down to the equator. We have overwhelming delta V. <laughs> 5,900 meters per second. Geostationary orbit only requires 4,000. Maybe 4,200. This should not be hard. <laughs> orbit prograde. RCS, we've got comms. Let's go. Don't mention I've said it, but uh, Test Light has not killed an engine in a while. That's the failed one. That's the failed geostationary orbit that couldn't boost its periapsis far enough up. Okay, that should be close enough, but I'll give it a few RCS puffs. Alright, up to Apoapsis we go. I still, I think, can't actually plot a... ...maneuver. Oh no, I can, I think. We now have the mission control upgrade. Okay, we can plot the maneuver up there. It should be okay, I think. Where's Earth? <laughs> Going, where's Earth? Where's Earth? I'm still above it. It shouldn't be this hard to spot. Oh, there it is. Jeez. Yeah, it was really hard to find it. Okay. All right, then. Separate in 15 minutes, it says. Okay, fine. Good enough. Go. 1,800. It really should only be 1,400, but okay. That might have gotten us last time too. I didn't think it was that much to correct the inclination and get into a circularish orbit for geostationary orbit. Still fell short, even from what the line here thought this stage could do. But maybe that's because of residuals or something. Okay, let's just separate. Oh, performance loss. What kind of performance loss? Oh no, it's specific impulse. Thrust is zero, but actually it's 0.5. Uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, 50 newtons. Great. I think even with that performance... This isn't reading the performance loss effect, though. But maybe we should still be able to do it. So, um... MechJet doesn't understand the performance loss effect. I knew I shouldn't have mentioned that test light hadn't gotten me. It decided to assert itself. Inclination just has to be below 3 degrees. At the rate we're going, it's not going to end up particularly well. Maybe the RCS would be able to handle it, but... I might take that three degree leeway. Now this still thinks it's got a max thrust of a hundred newtons. It definitely doesn't. Our RCS is now more efficient than this engine though. So we'll wait until it's done. Come on RCS.
We can do it. Okay, you can't do it. Gosh darn it. Well, yes, we were foiled by test light this time. Yeah, we had a performance loss on you. We could have made it if not for that. So close, yet still no good. Alright, well, I don't see any reason to change the rocket in order to get the geostationary satellite contract done. We'll just build another one and try it again. Uh, we just have to hope that test light is satisfied now, and I won't say anything about it this time. SAS on, well, I, that, that's just my normal pattern. I always try to turn on SAS. It's not required because Smart ASS. I'll have to look at uh, RP1 to see if they've got some way of stopping Smart ASS from working when SAS is not available. But maybe I should just remove the mech. I think the mechjet module just gets added to everything. And then I would have to manually say that if it doesn't have SAS, MechJeb shouldn't be there. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, throttle is up and ignition. And launch. And we better start turning quickly with this feisty thing. We get command modules in the command module section, and we do have the Mark 1 pod. But I feel like with a modern space program like this, or space company, they're not going to have a one Kerbal pod, one person pod. Kerbal's a people too. So I don't know if my policy is going to be allowing the Mark 1 pod or not. But obviously, if we don't allow the Mark 1 pod, we'll need a substantially larger pad than what we've got right now. We will still need a larger pad than what we've got right now. 40 tons isn't going to cut it if we do crewed missions. So probably we're doing interplanetary before we do crewed, which is fine because we've got the DSN upgrades as they are in the year 2000, so it shouldn't be too bad. That's why they keep sending CubeSats to other places, right? To the moon and beyond. Of course, technically the Marcosat had a bigger antenna on it. And it was like a 12 unit CubeSat. That was the one that went to Mars. Or Pear. I think there were two of them, right? Okay, high G-force. And staging. And fairings. Okay, so that stage is done, and we continue. Boy, the little ether engine is feisty for a 3.3 kilonewton engine, but yep. It is what we need right now. Hopefully we've got the boil off yeah, we've got the MLI layers. Okay, that'll be fine for now. We're going over to the equator, and we're going to burn out from there. As geostationary satellites do. And ignition. And shut down. Okay, a little bit too far, but it's probably okay. Alright. And we should probably turn to the sun anyway. Okay, good enough spin. Going up to apoapsis. Apoapsis doesn't seem in exactly the right position. Okay, let me plot something. I think that's the equatorial belt, and so apoapsis is a little bit further on. Okay, well that looks like what I wanted to do. And we shall do it, or try to. And yeah, uh, I previously remembered 1,400 meters per second. That was because I was playing out of Kuru in the RP1 series, so I sort of had that stuck in my head. Of course, at the, from the Cape, the inclination correction is much larger, and so we need more. Okay, and go. Well, lighting is always a good start. This dash does not represent how much delta V we have. I think this dash doesn't recognize the residuals. 
it goes by that number, which is different. But then again, that number sometimes is smaller than what Megjeb says, so it's confusing. Okay, separation and ignition. Now last time when this one had a failure and had half its specific impulse, I still think that that should result in half the delta V, but we ended up with less than half the delta V, I thought. This thing's plume is just completely in the wrong position, isn't it? And huge. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, again, I'll, I'll work on the plumes soon. <laughs> There's a lot of plumes involved. I also feel like this is just not representing the delta V of this correctly. I think that's basically the problem. Because if you look at uh, how much delta V we started off with, and how much we've burned through, we seem to have less. We seem to have less delta V. There's no propellant imbalance. So I don't know why this doesn't seem to have... At least it's... Yeah, I think it doesn't have the right delta V for it, but... Maybe I'm wrong, but I'll have to double check. We're in a relatively flat part of the orbit. You know, it's not deviating too much. In other words, it's straight line burn. Okay, well that's too much. We are more than one day. But is it satisfied? Not quite. Okay, so the apoapsis, the periapsis needs to be higher. And then we need to bring the apoapsis down. So let's go to our periapsis and then do that. Okay, it's happy with that, but I'll get to closer to... Uh, yeah. Well, we could try fine controls. Is fine controls actually working here? I mean, it's blue. But it sure changed... Okay, well that's closer. Alright, turning it off. Pointing at the sun, that's fine. Alright, um, yeah, let's just roll a bit. Okay. Pointing at the sun, it just got some extra period. Okay, fine. Whatever. Okay, no more fine controls. It's all set up. I don't think there's anything special. Oh, yeah, we've done all that. Alright, so we finally got the geostationary satellite contract, and I'll wrap it up here for today. So with that, Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.